Welcome everyone to the on-demand recording of our presentation on the United States Postal Service, USPS, postage rate increases. This presentation was recorded for release on January 22nd, 2020. In this session, I cover everything you need to know about the increase in postage rates for 2020 and how you can effectively plan your marketing budget this year. I want you to be able to walk into the office after the changes take effect and feel confident in your direct mail budget and strategy for 2020. Before I get started, I'd like to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Allison Jensen, and I'm the marketing manager for CompuMail. A little bit about us. CompuMail works with progressive marketers to increase customer spend by helping them talk to their customers, their donors, and their patrons in a way that their competition isn't. We serve a variety of industries, including retail, education, nonprofit, insurance, casino gaming, financial, and others. I'd like to review a couple quick housekeeping items. One of the first things I want to stress up front is that there's going to be a lot of products and a lot of information out there, but not everything is going to apply to you and your campaigns. I'll show you some of the most common postage rates and briefly outline some of the others, and I'll also provide a lot of resources that can help you with those. When we finish covering the changes, we'll spend some time talking about how the increases can potentially affect you. That will just be a quick discussion. What we're really going to spend a majority of our time on today is how these changes ultimately will not affect your campaigns. I don't want to spoil too much now, so you'll just have to stick with me to find out why. First up, we have the new prices to review. Now, for those of you that might not be completely familiar with USPS lingo, a letter is anything that's rectangular, at least 5 inches long, 3.5 and inches high, and 0 .007 inches thick, and no more than 11 and a half inches long, or 6 and an eighth inches high, or a quarter inch thick. So this could be a regular envelope of what you might initially think of when you hear the word letter. It could be a greeting card or a holiday card inserted into a 5 by 7 inch envelope. It could be a self-mailer, which prints flat and is then folded and sealed with glue dots or wafer seals to keep it closed. These can't be larger than 6 inches by 10 and a half inches. Um, and letters also could include cards up to 6 and an eighth inches by 11 and a half inches. Then there's flats, which include anything outside of those dimensions. So those pieces are anything that's larger than six and an eighth inches high, or more than 11 and a half inches long, or more than a quarter inch thick. That includes large envelopes, newsletters, magazines, large postcards. Um, flats also include any pieces that are square, because there's a certain aspect ratio that determines how easily a piece can run through USPS equipment. The aspect ratio for a letter is 1.3 to 2.5 and a square piece wouldn't have that, so it has to mail as a flat. Um, the aspect ratio just has to do with the dimensions of your piece. We, here at CompuMail, we have several postal experts on staff that could help you out if you had any questions about that. I won't get into too much detail here. I listed an optional resource that you can check out, but this is something that you can work with your mail service provider to decide what's best for you and for your budget. We work really closely with the post office, and our staff is awesome about making sure that your mail pieces are the proper size and specs to adhere to USPS standards. I see it firsthand when I work on internal self-promotion projects, and our customer service representatives and technical services teams make sure to carefully review the project with me every step of the way. I'm going to do my best with the next two slides. I dug through the USPS postal news and references notices to pull these numbers, and I found out that I was in way over my head, and I should have asked our postal expert to present today. Um, but I did pull out some ranges of automation rates that I think are important because the postage cost here depends on the weight of the piece and how granularly it's being sorted, whether that's all the way down to the five-digit zip code or a little bit more loosely by the postal distribution center that the pieces are all going to. So while the other rate changes are good to know, this might actually be more relevant to your campaigns. And I do want to note here that when we say standard mail, we're talking about marketing mail. Um, so the rates here... First class automation is changing to uh, 38 cents to 43 cents in 2020. Um, standard automation is changing from is changing to 25 cents to 29 cents, and nonprofit automation is changing is actually not changing. Um, so nonprofit will be the same rates that it was last year. It's important to note here that a nonprofit organization is not automatically entitled to USPS nonprofit mail rates. Um, nonprofits do need to acquire a nonprofit authorization number or NPA um, from the USPS. And if anybody needed help with that, feel free to reach out. We can assist in helping you with um, your application submission. There's also certain rates for first class pre sort. 
And in case you're wondering, pre-sorting and mailing so that all the addresses are in order just makes the process easier on the post office and they pass the savings along to you. Shipping services will depend on product. Priority Mail Express will increase by 2.2% and Priority Mail will increase by 2.8%. So now we will cover how these rates can affect your mailings. We can run through some approximations here using 5,000, 10,000, and 100,000 records as the base and standard automation as the mailing class. Here is the breakdown of what the campaigns would cost in postage um, for those three quantities. And these are just examples. You probably wouldn't pay that full price at 100000 as you would likely be getting some great discounts that there are for the volume that you're doing. But this is just to show the difference. And when you look at the differences, you can see that the increases are pretty marginal when you think about the overall cost of the campaign. So I know I just threw out a lot of numbers and a lot of different USPS products. I hope I didn't overwhelm you with that information because when it comes down to it, it really won't affect your mailings that much. I do have some tips now for maximizing your direct mail budget this year in terms of postage. When you work with a full service provider, you leverage their relationship with the post office, which allows you to unlock the largest discounts available. You also leverage their knowledge of the industry and they can help you figure out what mailing option is best for you. Postage, postage itself depends on a number of factors, including size, weight, delivery time, whether it's first class or standard, pre-sorted or not, and even the quantity of the mailing itself. The more you mail, the better your rates will be because the USPS is looking for that volume. Here at CompuMail, we're certified at the print and mail level and work with our customers to help them find the best ways to get their mail where it needs to go. We're also authorized for Mail Anywhere, meaning that we can mail on a client's permit, no matter where it is, from our local Business Mail Entry Unit, or BMEU. Without Mail Anywhere, mailing on a client permit means freight costs to enter the mail at the same facility where the permit resides. Postage is never marked up, so the savings that come from the post office go directly to you. And we also have a postal substation here, which results in added savings as you skip that step when the mail is brought to the, the BMEU. The USPS also offers discounts on mailings that use any of the elements outlined here. You'll want to note the registration period for each of these promotions. There are limited sign-up dates for the promotions, which may close before the promotion period ends. Uh, the first promotion is tactile sensory and interactive mail piece engagement, which has to do with um, innovations and creative use of stock, finishing and ink, and how you use visuals, sounds, scents, and textures to get people's attention and get them to interact with your mail. Then there is emerging and advanced technology, which has to do with incorporating things like augmented or virtual reality, anything that connects print and digital onto your pieces. Earned value promotion is for mailings that contain business reply cards, courtesy reply cards, or share mail postcards, or any means that encourages the recipient to put a response back into the mail stream. ShareMail itself is a newer product from the USPS that allows marketers to insert prepaid letters and postcards into their mail that recipients can address and drop in the mail at no charge to the recipient. It's a really great way to leverage word of mouth advertising and referrals in direct mail. The goal here is, to, again, to get more mail back into the mail stream. A few examples of ShareMail applications are event promotions. You can send an invite to someone and include four additional invites that they can send to friends and family. Um, a couple of examples suggested from the USPS include corporate offices, including offers for recipients to refer friends to local franchises, or enclosing thank you cards and gift purchases so that a recipient, the recipient can send a thank you note to the purchaser. I think that right there is a pretty cool idea. And most simply, you can just insert a, a simple refer a friend offer to grow your grow your referral program. The next promotion is Personalized Color Trans Promo, which has to do with the use of dynamic variable color print for bills and statements. There's Mobile Shopping Promotion, which is for mailings that encourage online interaction from the mail piece via QR codes. And finally, there is the Informed Delivery Promotion for mailings that incorporate informed delivery interactive campaigns into their mailings. And the discounts for all of these range between 2% and $0.04. Cents. Um, so depending on the specific promotion, it could be either 2% or $0.04. Cents. 
And if you are interested in signing up, um, you can contact us and we'll let you know what the specific uh, discount will be. As I wrap up today's presentation, I want to share a couple of final thoughts on the rate increases. Overall, mail volume is down, but standard marketing mail continues to be profitable for the USPS, and it also remains an important component of the Smart Marketers Toolbox. So that's our take on the postage increases. Hopefully, this presentation has inspired you to think differently about your direct mail budget and has sparked some ideas about how to get creative with your postage options this year. If you need help coordinating any of your direct mail campaigns, we're here for you. For those of you that aren't familiar with us, like I said earlier, we are a full service mail service provider. Our primary focus is delivering quality print and mail solutions and our expertise in various disciplines of direct and omni-channel marketing might provide a valuable solution to simplify your campaigns. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me using my contact information on the next page. I do have a couple common questions that we are often asked. The first one is, how do I know what mailing class I should use? And ideally, you wouldn't have to make that decision. If you were working with a provider like us, you could provide us the information about your mailing and we could help you figure that out based on all of the USPS rules and specs. Another common question is, what does pre-sort mean? This is the process of taking a mailing list and sorting it by zip code, so the addresses are in order of where the piece will be delivered. Pre-sorting a mailing saves the post office time, not having to sort through it themselves, and saving them time saves you money, so pre-sort is definitely an important part of that process. A third question we get is, what is full-service print and mail? This is a USPS certification that designates a print and mail provider has met certain criteria for the way they process mail. This includes pre-sorting, the use of intelligent mail barcodes, which are the lines you see at the bottom of the piece that the post office scans, and the the way information about the mailing is submitted electronically to the USPS for processing. All of these factors make it easier on the post office, which again means less time for them and more savings for you. So that's everything we have. Thank you for joining us for this on-demand presentation.